Very good morning to all of you. Can you able to see the PPT? Yes, sir. Okay, in our combined first class, I have taken about preliminary one about wildlife management. About that particular topic, as I said, I will provide some notes on it. Uh, today I'm going to share some notes. of the previous class, as well as today's class, the notes and some reference material I will share with you. Regarding some wildlife expert, I had a discussion with DHR of the university. Then I have already proposed few names and I'm awaiting the approval from headquarter. Once it has been approved, few classes will be arranged. Whether it is before your second exam or after that, it will depend upon how long time it will take by the headquarter to approve the list of the experts, especially on wildlife management. As a wildlife management requires some some students are still joining. Uh, so once they are approved, then I will invite them. Now coming to today's topic that is about the wildlife organizations, conventions, protocols, summits on conservations. These are some organizations name, some of the conventions or conferences, and some of the agenda items which was held up or found all over the world in the last few decades, only some important organizations name and their main function is being described in your class notes, as well as in your
Hello? Can you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, in between, I hope audio was off because of that, you could not able to hear. Okay, so you can see the PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what I want to say, uh, that IUCN, that is uh, International Union for Conservation of Natural Natural Resources, they have six commission in simple words you can see six branches or six heads the first one is commission on ecosystem management that is in short form it is called about CEM its main agenda is to guide how to manage the nature and the ecosystem. Then next one is Commission Education and Communication. This commission, our branch, main responsibility is to educate the people about the nature and about the requirement of natural resource or conservation of natural resources as we have to use natural resources for our survival but uh, we should use it in a judicious way, that is called sustainable use of natural resources. So this commission, CEC, is mainly responsible for education and the communication among the different groups or the peoples involved in the protection of nature and natural resources. Next commission, that is Commission on Environmental, Economic and Social Policy, that is called CEESP. This is about, they look after regarding different policies, economic activities, how it can combine with environmental, economic and social factors. This C double -E -S -P. From examination point of view, about this abbreviation, about this commission, all the wordings, whatever it is coming, try to note it. From examination point of view, it might be helpful. Next one is Commission and Environmental Law. This is mainly about the international laws. They used to study the international laws and whether it is being implemented by the signatory government organizations or not. And these laws are mainly focusing how to conserve the natural and natural resources. Next one is the important one that is Species Survival Commission, SSC. Sometimes in the exam, they used to ask what is SSC, Species Survival Commission. This commission mainly advises the union on the technical aspects about the species conservations and uh, how to conserve it. They used to make the list of different animals, wild animals, flora, as well as fauna. They used to make a list that popularly, I hope all of you know, we used to call this IUCN red list or red data list. So about IUCN red data list, little bit, I will explain later part. So this 
एस एस सी मेन रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज टू स्टडी अबाउट द पॉपुलेशन पैटर्न देर हैबिटेट ऑफ दिस फोना एंड देर लिस्टिंग द डिफरेंट फ्लोरा एंड फोना व्हिच आर एट whether it is threatened or it is endangered or highly endangered about this tamil nadu we'll talk later on and they also make a list and they advise us how to conserve this species next one is the last one world commission on protected areas as you know all over the world used to have certain areas where this area are created all over the world to minimize the the human interference in this to minimize the hinder, human interference in this protected area so that both flora and fauna it exist as it is in nature as last time somebody was saying about the food chain sound the food chain we noticed it like the carnivores they eat herbivores then herbivores lives on this plant so if there is destruction of habitat if the plant species or grassland forelen is being damaged then population of avivo animals in that area will reduced subsequently there will be scarcity of food for the carnivore and the population of carnivores may go down so it is called food chain some of the things that is observable but some of the things it is not observable as in the winter jungles thousands of species are there so some of the things already been explored how they survive what is their food chain so some of the things still not being established and uh, to maintain all those species it may be flora it may be fauna without human interference if it is kept as us then only some of the flora and fauna can be maintained in the wild so considering that world commission on protected areas they have identified certain hot spots on world wood and they try to make that those areas in a natural way they are trying to minimize the human interference so this commission is uh responsible for formulating the guidelines and notifying those protected area all over the world next come about as i said iucn1 uh iucn about the read letter my data list or sometimes we used to call read data book this was first created in 1963 of course time to time it is being revised some species are included here some species are excluded from here so the under iucn they are trying to maintain the list of the different plant as well as the animal species depending upon their population depending upon their survivability in near years in other words whether they are at in danger of extinction or they are in endangered species or they are highly endangered species or they are called rare species so depending upon 
their population, habitat destruction, all the animals, wild animals and the plants, they are making list. And according to their hierarchy, they categorize these animals or the plants. Right at the moment, we will focus mainly on the plants or these animals. On this is extinct, extinct in the world, critically endangered, endangered. So these are hierarchy. Hierarchy in the sense, the first they are categorizing extinct. The animals which already extinct on the world, they are being categorized under the extinct one. And the last time, uh, I have given some assignment to the students of this Elizabeth Veterinary College, where there was, I have mentioned about the... Hello? 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 Someone can you come? Excuse me, some of you are putting on your microphone, please put it off. Oh, it's all right. Can you hear me or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? So what I want to say is that they are categorizing the animals. First one is extinct, which animals already being extinct. So I have prepared some list of the animals, animals in the forms uh, to do, make some assignments by the students of this veterinary college of Bicelisi. The students from Zaluki Veterinary College, have you prepared any assignment on these wild animals? Any assignment is given by your teachers? Anyone from Zaluki Veterinary College? Yes, sir. Whether any assignment on these wild animals is being given by your teacher uh, to do sir, it? Actually, uh, we had an assignment regarding our indigenous animals in our, each of our state. Yes. Indigenous, you are talking about wild animals? Yes, sir, wild animals. Okay. So you are preparing. So what I'm saying, it, um, uh, it in the form of uh, yeah. an assignment, you can prepare some uh, one page or two page, two page notes on commonly seen, you have seen animals or commonly uh, wild animals found in the zoos or, nest, or in the sanctuaries or the national parks. Maybe one page or two page notes, you can prepare it so that you will have some idea. These are the wild animals are here. So what I want to mean now is that IUCN in the data, data list. So they are making the list of these animals depending upon their population and depending upon their severity or their danger of extinctions. So first category they are making is extinct. So here, last time I have given one dodo. Let's, this uh, already extinct, these are. Then passenger pigeon, that one is there. Definitely if you search in the net, you will find some information about these birds or the animals which already extinct. Like in India, 
has we from India, of course, it is extinct like uh, Sita. Sita is being extinct. From the northeastern region, one is uh, white wing wood duck. That one also they uh, they are putting in highly endangered, but they have they might have already extinct from this India. They were found in northeast part. So next category they are putting it extinct in the world wide. Some animals uh, because of the mainly destruction of the habitat. Because these and some animals they require certain specific habitat or the environment or the vegetation. Very simple words you can say. If it is being destroyed, then these those animals or birds they may not survive. And some of the animals they are extinct in the wild. So these are some Barbary lion, dromedary, sphinx, macaw. These are animals. If you search in the net, you will find about these animals where it were available and all. But they are now trying to conserve in the zoo. The population is not yet totally extinct, but they are trying to breed in the captive and trying, trying to increase their population. Next one is critically endangered. See, these are one another category of animals are there. Uh, what I want to mean is that they are categorizing like this way. One is critically endangered, then endangered, then vulnerable, then near threatened, least concerned. Data not sub def data deficient about those and species. Data is not sufficient to categorize. Then some of these species are there not yet evaluated about their population and all, but they are in the list. The names are there, but they, they are not being evaluated whether they are falling under the above category. These are depending upon their whether the population is there. If the population is the how much population is there and whether the habitat how much habitat is there or how many localities around the world it is available how many countries are available so depending upon that population size and habitat and all they are describing under this category so it is from the top you can say this is the extinct one so slowly it is going down the last one is the not evaluated one so here are you see and read that the official down threatened is a group of three categories that is critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable. So these three category combinedly, sometimes people say it is threatened one. Threatened one means they required some conservation effort if if they are not being conserved or effort, efforts are not being taken then they will from near threatened to vulnerable then from vulnerable to they will progress to endangered then from critically endangered like that way they will progress further okay so next coming to Number two, that is organization is traffic. The trade record analysis of flora and fauna in commerce. That is a uh, traffic in very short form we used to call this traffic. So from examination point of view, as I said already, the pool form try to Memorize it at least where this, when this uh, organization was or institution was formed and which year it is formed, where its headquarters is available, and the one or two main importance that much is more than enough. 
So a little bit of knowledge, what is about IUCN, what is the role, what is traffic, what is the role, that little bit you should know it. So this uh, traffic established in the year 1976, uh, it's a joint program of WWF and uh, that is World Conservation Union, that, uh, earlier it was World Conservation Union, now it is called IUCN. So the traffic as a name itself, it is written on about the commerce. So they are mainly focusing on the about the trade related activities of this wild animals or wild plants. So traffic objectives, their main objectives are to protect wild animal and plant species from endangerment by trade. Number two, safeguarding priority ecoregions from negative impact of wildlife trade, conserving particularly valuable wildlife resources for human needs, promoting international agreement and policies that encourage sustainability in wildlife trade. So what I'm saying, this organization or institution is mainly focusing on uh, commerce related to wildlife. Then next one is, just excuse me for a minute. So next one is size, that is Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. So the earlier organization it was also related with the wildlife commerce and trade. This one is also related with this one, but basic difference is this one, the size is mainly they are dealing with more focused on endangered species. Not all wild flora and fauna, but they are focusing mainly on endangered species. As you have seen in the list, if we are not taking care of this endangered species, if the trade is continued in this endangered species, in future, they will be highly endangered in category it will come. Then sometimes it, it may come progress further that extinct from the wild and it may be extinct category it might fall. So they are trying to regulate all those illegal trade on this endangered species. And they are focusing all over the world how to restrict or how to control this trade related activities related to endangered species. As you know, many things, it cannot be trade like the domestic goods. So that is about uh, sites. Then uh, next one is wildlife enforcement monitoring system. This is a GIS based model developed to monitor wildlife law enforcement in Asian region. So what is GIS? Can anybody say what is GIS? Excuse me. Are you there? Uh, please respond. It should not be only one-way process. 
you also give some feedback. What is GIS? Geographic Information System. Geographic Information System is right. So this one, very shortly, just I will explain to you. See, a particular area or a national park is there with the help of satellites they take the photographs of that national park and with this this is a computer based information system so by taking that satellite pictures they can easily calculate the area of that very basically area of that national national park then they can locate it water bodies present there and uh, during different seasons whether the status of status of that water bodies is there they can locate it they can also see the visitation pattern during different seasons of the year. Again, they can even monitor the wildlife migration from one part of the national park to other one. What I'm saying, it is a computer-based information systems. It is quite handy. So with the help of these photographs and all, uh, it can give a lot of data and which can be utilized for management as well as making certain decision for conservation of nature and natural resources. So they are looking after our, this organization, Wildlife Enforcement and Monitoring System. They are looking about the development of this system. Then our next one, this is MAB. It's called the Man and the Biosphere Program. This was basically launched in the year 1970. So this is as in the name itself, it says about the Biosphere Program and the Man. So They are trying to link the ecology, that means about the habitat, about the human being present there, and about the social structure upon there. In other words, how this human being, wildlife, and the nature, they can progress they are looking on this one that is called man and bias program. It will be detailed notes. I will give it to you. Today itself, I will try to share. You can go through it. And if you require more information, you can search in the net, you will find. Next one is World Database on Protected Areas. A few minutes ago, I spoke about the importance of protected areas. This is like that of GIS system. They are making the list of different protected areas, what are the flora, fauna they're making is there. So this organization is mainly looking after this world database on protected areas. Database means for any policy making, any policy making, you need certain data. For example, in the state of Siasam, what is the tiger population at present time? Or what is the tiger population around 10 years ago? Or what was the tiger population around 
20 years ago. This data will tell us the condition of the status of the wildlife. So this is about only population one, about their habitat, all those things, all this data will tell us that what is going on exactly in the nature and accordingly any policy can be taken up. So creation of the data is very, very important for to take up or to formulate any policies. So this one world Based on protected areas, it provides the most comprehensive data set on protected areas worldwide and it is being managed by UNEP or that is World Convention Monitoring Center that is under the United Nations Environment Program. They are maintaining this one. Then next one is Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, this is, uh, some of you might have, um, heard about the Art Summit, Rio de Janeiro. Can anybody say where is Rio de Janeiro situated? Brazil, good. So this is our summit. So here the, the concept of sustainable development came. So it, that was the biggest conventions held on the, no doubt it is sustainable development. Sustainable development means if you, if I have, have to explain to you, uh, very general terminology I'm explaining to you. See, we are we are depending upon the food for our survival. Then we require clothes to wear. We require a shed or a house to dwell or live. Same way to move from one place to another, we required one car. Same way we required the road so that car can fly. So all these, our requirements, this we can see this, these are all consumptions. Not only food, whatever we are utilizing, in other words, we can say it is consumptions. Where from it is coming? These are coming from nature only, from the nature only. So when the population is increasing, definitely we are going to put pressure on the nature. And if the way people are, population is increasing and the consumption pattern is increasing, consumption of certain things. I'm not talking about food. As I said already, all those TV, fridge, everything is consumption. So consumption pattern of developing countries people and developed countries people is different. Developed countries people, they used to consume a lot of things. So developing countries people, we do not have that much of purchasing power. That's why we are not in a position to do. But what I'm saying is that there is a consumption. When the population is increasing, consumption rate will increase. Again, depending upon the purchase power, consumption is increased. If the present trend is continued, the natural resources also having a limitations. To some extent, they can rejuvenate but that is up to a certain extent. Beyond certain point, it cannot be rejuvenated. It cannot be rejuvenated. So it is going to damage for permanently. So if we do like that way, our future generation, we will go, human being maximum lives 100 years. If we will go, but for our future generation, nothing will be left. 
So, being supreme creatures, we should adopt certain policies in such a way that we'll have to live, but at least we'll have to keep things or necessary resources for our future generation also. So we should use the necessary resources. We have to use it for our survival. We will have to use it, these resources. Otherwise, we cannot survive. But we should use these resources in such a way that there is minimal impact on the environment or mother earth or the nature so that the mother earth can rejuvenate these necessary resources for the future generation to come. Future generation to come. Some of you visited Punjab, some of you are from Punjab. Any student from Punjab? Any student from Punjab? Hello, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello? You are there or not? Yes, sir. Any students yes, sir. from Punjab? No, sir. No, sir. Through VCI? None? No, sir. You know about Green Revolution, right? Yes, sir. During 50s, early 50s, early 60s, after independence, our country was not in a position to require produced the required amount of food grains. Maybe rice, these are the main food, then wheat, bajra and all. We are not in a produce position to produce it. There was hunger all over in India. People used to die. And uh, just India was liberated. And uh, these food grains were imported from different developed countries, like from USA or from European countries, and somehow our people were fed. But in 1970s, the scientists and the political people during that time, they decided that if we do not do something, we cannot produce our food grains by ourselves, how long we will be able to be in bowl? So they decided to increase the production of this wheat as well as paddy through intensification or scientific production. They procured high yielding variety seeds, then chemical fertilizers they used, then pesticides they used, and uh, slowly, slowly, the, there was increase in the production of the food grains, particularly that belt, Punjab, Haryana, uh, that UP, Western UPs, these belts, they were able to produce a lot of food grains. And we are now self-sufficient in food grain production. See, what I want to say is that although the population is increased right from 50s, during that time hardly 34, 32 crore people were there. Now we are having 137 nearing crore people are there. Although the population is increased, but because of the technologies, because of the scientific intervention, we could able to produce more food grain. Rather, now we can export food grain. So during that process, what happened? Uh, I should say that injudicious use of or improper use of chemicals, this fertilizers, the soil quality, all, all those bells 
has gone down very badly. Even the groundwater level also gone down drastically. So now if you go, if you see the soil of those areas, the quality almost humus is almost gone. So this is an irreparable damage is being already been now. So to produce a humus soil, thousands of years are required. But improper use of that one, the quality of this soil has gone down. Now the scientists, they are trying how to rejuvenate all those things. So in what I want to focus is that about this sustainable development. It is not that we have to use the natural resources, but in such a way that whatever natural resources are there, they will satisfy our present demand and they will satisfy or they will fulfill the demand of the future generation to come on this planet Earth. So there the concept came sustainable development and in the year 1972, this convention was there in the Earth, that, that is in, called Earth Summit in the Rio de Janeiro and they have taken a lot of decisions about conservation of nature Basically, they focused mainly on sustainable development of the human being, sustainable development. So in the net, you will find in some places nowadays, they used to give six, um, what is called uh, two years master degree course on sustainable development. You will find a lot of information if you search in the net about this Earth Summit, Rio de Janeiro, 1972. So, Next one is Convention on Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. So this name itself, it says this is mainly on uh, migratory species. This convention is mainly on migratory species because of the destruction of the habitat and all some birds they used to migrate from one continent to another one and because they have been some animals used to migrate from one place to another one so if you look into all those national geographic and on all you used to see the migration of different bisons from one place to another season wise you might have seen so they are dealing with about the conservation of migratory species. Then next one is uh, Ramsar Convention. On this convention, the name Ramsar, actually it, uh, the name of place that is located in Iran, here, Mainly this convention one, how to use judiciously about the wetlands, about the wetland. So they have formulated certain policies, how to conserve the wetlands of international importance. And because of that, this treaty is called, convention is called Ramsar Convention. So it was held in 1971. So somebody may ask what is the Damsar Convention. You can at least say that it is related with wetland conservation. Then WWF, that one, this is Worldwide, Worldwide Fund for Nature and Natural Resources. Usually these are non-government organizations. They are working at different levels all over the world for conservation of nature all over the world. Not only animals, for both flora and fauna. This was formed in 1961 in Switzerland. Next one is World 
Wild Learners Congress. So time is almost 11. You might have class from 11, I hope. Yes, sir. So I will wind it up here. Later on, when I continue, I will continue here. And I will give the soft copy of this one through WhatsApp. Kindly download it. And uh, about the first class which I have taken, some notes as well as some reference material already those reference material i have already shared with the students of Celestia veterinary college but i have not shared with jalgo veterinary college i will again share it okay for then bye bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. thank you sir welcome welcome